Hey, I'm Kat Cunning, and I'm hanging out with Rob on Front Row Live. Congratulations. Uh, new signing with Lava Records. That Lava has been one of these record labels that has been like slowly getting all of this these great artists in the last like year or so, like they're starting to take over. <laughs> um, talk to me about like that opportunity for you to sign with them and like what, it, how did this kind of happen? It's a huge deal. I am so, so, so excited. I don't know. I feel like I've been holding out to make sure that I don't sign to people that don't believe in what I do or that don't have, uh, don't see the vision. And just like the second that I met Jason, I was like, we are, a fit. He's such a like renaissance man. That's the, that's the head of lava. He's such a renaissance man. He has so many projects. He's politically conscious. And I just feel like he got that about me right away and was down to champion it. And it, I was like, let's do this. Once this signing happened, like how, how did you see like uh, your artist project kind of just like evolve? I mean, it's so new, but um, you know, there's just a whole another team of people helping my vision come to life. So one of the things that I have done since signing with Lava is put out Supernova and make the Supernova video. And I have a really like um, tangible memory of reading the first treatments that I received for Supernova and being able to see that like these directors who are on a totally another, like just at another level than anything I'd ever worked with before all really understood my vision and had um, ideas for how to make it come to life that were all different and amazing and resonated with me. And so I think like so far what being signed has been like for me is it's just like there are more people who are great at what they do who can help me bring what I've been doing for so long by myself to life. And that's really cool. So I feel like it's, it's scary when you first release the debut single, like that first ever. And then it's even scarier when it's the debut single with the new signing. Um, what was it about Supernova that you felt like this was the appropriate or the right single to kind of introduce the world? I don't know. I wasn't ever really scared, to be honest. I was just like, this song feels emblematic of everything that I believe in and everything that I write in as an, I write about as an artist. I write a lot about courage um, in love and destruction and a willingness to look dumb for love. And I think that's something that I stand for as an artist too. And I also feel like the song itself embodies like the, the two sides of me, one of them being like really introverted and personal and the other one being like, I want to perform this at a gigantic stadium with like lighters out. And that happens by the end of Supernova. So I felt like it just was a good um, introduction of the things I believe in, care about and what I want to do, like the size of what I want to do on a stage when stages come back. <laughs> right as far as like the as far as the writing process like was there a specific situation a specific lyric that kind of kick-started the idea of this song yes I wrote this song on a day that a girl that I was falling for was ignoring me <laughs> uh it, and the sentiment of supernova it's all although it comes across as like kind of a happy song and I realize that people are resonating with uh, the idea of who their supernova is like their special someone is for me it's like a pretty dark story about falling for someone who you know is just gonna break your heart and like kill you actually um and i wrote this for her um on the day she wasn't texting me back i think that a lot of the times when i sing it also comes from this place of like really needing to be heard after living like a very long life of not singing at all singing still pretty new to me um and I sing from like a primal place of like needing to express myself, usually in some form of emotional emergency. Um, and so this song sort of wrote itself in like 10 minutes. I had stuff I wanted to say to her. I wanted her to believe that I was worth her time and I was willing to do anything to impress her. And it just like fell out of my face. And actually the, um, the song that you hear now is the vocal from that day that I wrote the song because I was like I can't match this I just like felt a certain way when I was writing this song and you can hear that on, on the voice like I I think that's what that's one of the things that made me fall in love with your voice it's that like I hear and I feel that passion and that emotion kind of coming out of it um you know Thank the you. fact that it was such a personal thing and such a vulnerable song like and the fact that you are still like new to music or singing 
how did you get comfortable in order to like release this or especially like even working in the studio with a producer? I, it's like always an ever changing, ever growing experience for me. It still scares the shit out of me, which is why I like doing it. Um, but I feel like the thing that's like harnessed me and made me feel confident enough to share my art or to even to keep making it is a sense of story. Like I like to ask myself when I'm writing a song, um, this sounds so like bougie and hippie and that's really like misleading. That's not my personality, but it really helps me when I'm making art. I ask myself, why are you breaking the perfect silence of the earth? And if you don't have something to say, it's a waste of everyone's time. And for me, it's not exciting for me to make art in order to like, receive a claim like I'm not doing any of what, what I do in order to feel like I'm good at it that would really stress me out um so at the heart of it there's always just like I have a story to tell I think other people will benefit from hearing this story and I want to connect with people desperately so that's why I make the art and I trust that like if I'm pitchy or whatever it just doesn't matter as much as telling the story so I think like my faith in performing and communicating is what has made me commit to doing this so talk to me about that collaboration with uh, Simon Says and Sir Nolan, because that like, those are two big names that, you know, have been working with a lot of major pop artists. So for you to like get together with them and start collaborating on this track, like, first of all, what was it about them that, that drew your attention? And second of all, what was that uh, experience like? Well, Supernova had like a lot of iterations. Um, I wrote it just with piano and sang it and f sort of fell in love with it being like that. But I knew from um, performing with this like sort of temporary production that it had more size than that and it could have tempo and it could like be something bigger than just like a ballad. And so I had a lot of different tries production wise at trying to find that. And where I went that was too that was wrong for me it was like all the way to like almost EDM me dancey or something. And I just felt like it was like beating the message out of the song. And I knew that I needed someone who could support it with tempo without overpowering the sense of story and like character in my vocal. And I just think that Nolan's really good at that. And you know, the work that they've done together has been just like really good at like clarifying a pop song, bringing the vocal forward and also yeah, allowing for it to be about the story. And it was really, really cool to hear what they did with it the first time because it was something that I had been hearing in my head for a long time and just hadn't gone right. And it was like, click right away. So although this sounds like this was like a natural process for you, like the song came out naturally and all that stuff, like what were some of the challenges that you kind of faced in, in the creative, creative or even in the recording process? Yeah, just not finding the right personality for it at first. Um, I think, I mean, challenge, other challenges I faced in the recording process were singing the really, really high notes. Uh, they're so high in that song. Um, but that, that's really fun too. Uh, there's like that queen type bridge. And I just like, that's me singing. We didn't pitch that up. And I can't believe I did that in somebody's house. Um, but yeah, I think the main challenge was like, I really care about the story. I really care about the vocal. I got demo love for the way that I recorded it on the day. And so naturally, every time I heard a production, I was like, this is not what it was. Um, and then ha like opening your mind and taking a little space from it so that you can actually hear it as something new is so important to do. And I feel like, yeah, I, I took a lot of time and it, it had a lot of different lives before I found the right one. <laughs> So I'm already hooked on you. I, I need more music from you already just because wow. I like literally like fell in love with your voice. So um, you are currently working on your debut uh, EP. So like, what can fans expect with this? And like, how do you feel about this process so far? Um, I'm so excited. I have so many songs and I'm, I continue to write songs and I'm so indecisive because, you know, like in the business of music you have to like have a plan for how you release stuff and you have to like like you can't just put something out the next day right but i keep i keep thinking i have the ep and then i write a song and i'm like this should be on it though this is great um but i have like uh i've, I've settled on a group of songs that i feel like tell sort of the beginning of my story as a lover they're songs about love and heartbreak and um if Supernova is like the anthem of how I love, the other ones are just sort of like portraits of different parts of my life in love. And um, yeah, I think they go from from feeling like, like I said, 
not heard and like I need to make noise. So there's like some anger, there's some desperation and there's also some romance and like, you know, whatever. It's beautiful. It's going to be so exciting to finally give to the world. I've been holding on to these songs for so long and I'm, yeah, I'm really excited. <laughs> you can expect from- drama. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> and you come from, you come from like film and acting. So like, do you get, does that, did you feel like the transition from, from film and acting to music? Do you feel like that was like a natural progression or do you feel like it was something that you kind of, it was like starting all over again, trying to figure out the ropes and trying to figure out how to do this and that? Actually, both acting and music are very new for me. Um, they sort of happened at the same time. I spent most of my life as a dancer and then I told the dance company I could sing and I started singing in this dance company. That was my first experience singing and I was totally making up that I could sing. I had only like (laughs) sung in the shower. Um, And that was super, super, super new to me and strange to adapt to, but also really comforting to um, have like such a launch pad that was in something I was already really comfortable with, meaning dance. Like I knew how to be on a stage as a dancer and to like dance a piece and then sing a song was really, um, yeah, it was really interesting because I was able to think of my voice as another muscle and just another part of my body. And I think it's like dance has really influenced me as a singer because the only business I have singing is thinking of it as dancing kind of, and I've definitely taught myself for the most part and am just now like sort of learning what other people think singing is, um, which is cool (laughs) and really exciting. But yeah, both acting and singing feel both like foreign and exciting and like a risk every time I do them, but also like strangely familiar and like dance has translated in some way because dance gave me an interesting approach to music and also storytelling and also being in my body. And I think they all just really feed each other. Now, do you think about all, all three while you're writing music? Oh, yeah. I mean, I think that's why I'm such a uh, music video fanatic. Like if there's a eighth career for me in the future, it's directing music videos. I love the um, I love the culmination of music and and character and story. And um, I always see a music video in my head when I'm writing. Lastly, again, going back to your voice, um, because like you mentioned, you only sang in the shower prior to like actually performing with it. Like, how did you like discover your voice and the fact that you could, you had that muscle and you can use it. And what was that process like for you? Well, I definitely um, like started small in terms of like, I thought for sure I'm only an alto and I can't hit high notes and I can only talk sing, but it's like soulful. I think that's like a starting place for a lot of people. They're like, I have a cool tone and I'll just sing with my tone. And I think that was like, I thought that's all I could do. And then I would write songs that, naturally through the story took me to places that I was surprised by being able to sing just because I was like trusting the message and trusting my instincts. Um, But yeah, I I literally just lied and said I could sing and then I had to figure out how to do it. Um, (laughs) But I started also, I think this is like a fun thing to share. I started by covering a Lana Del Rey song and Lana Del Rey was like famous on SNL for being pitchy and like low key, a horrible singer, but you're so I personally am like engrossed by her performance and her lyricism and her songwriting. So um, yeah, I sort of was just like, I I got to learn on the job singing sort of the most singer friendly music, I guess. People tell me now that it was harder than I thought it was, but just sort of faking it till you make it. That's how I did it. Well, I mean, listening to Supernova, I, I honestly, it doesn't sound like you're a new artist. It sounds like you've been singing for quite some time and you know how to control your voice and you know that that muscle exists. So Thank congratulations you. Well, with that. I will say I did get to literally learn on the job performing every single night. So like... Thank you to all the audiences that listened to me when I really didn't know what I was doing, (laughs) that paid tickets to see that show. Um, But I do think there's something to the fact that I had to actually commit and perform. And like a lot of new artists now are like learning how to sing by writing songs on a tiny mic in their house. Like, I think there's some real value to the fact that I actually cut my teeth on stages where you like either shit your pants or finish the song, you know? Well, I guess now the only thing we can, we, we can't wait for is that live show. Cause I feel like there's, you know, because you have all of that experience of performing live, I feel like you're just going to nail it. Um, it's true. I live to perform live and my heart is a little bit broken by this current lifestyle. 
Well, hopefully we can make that for 2021 because I don't see it happening this year. <laughs> no, it's not going to happen this year. <laughs> I do have faith that there will be like some illegal dance clubs and like nightclubs though with like, you know, 30 people who have like stayed tested and stuff like that. Like, please someone start that DM me <laughs> when it exists because I really need to gather and I need to dance and I need to <laughs> have a little nightclub moment. <laughs> well, definitely if I, if I hear anything, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll let you know. Okay. <laughs> Well, thank you again for taking the time. Congratulations with Lava and with Supernova. And I really hope that next time we get to do this in person because I feel like there's so much more you can talk about. Yeah, for sure. It was, it was good to <laughs> hang though. Thanks for taking the time.